Hey folks, Fred Bernardo, the smoking guitar player from Tasty Licks Barbecue. You know, I got a local barbecue team here called Q and By the Fire. They're a startup. They just started competing this year, and I've been kind of mentoring them. So they want to know what to do to make a brisket box, how you make your presentation box and turn in your brisket once it's cooked. And that's what that video is. We're going to make a KCBS brisket turn-in box that you can win one of these here trophies. Let's go! Oh, and I probably should tell you, this video is about 30 minutes long, and if you're not into competition barbecue, well, it could get kind of boring, but at least you'll see exactly what a competition team goes through. Now, the brisket's already been cooked overnight by the team. They brought it to me, wrapped in foil, with the juices, ready to make the box. So again, that's what we're going to do. So if you get bored, feel free to just skip this video and go on to the next one. And don't forget to like it, though. Please like my videos. Okay, again, here we go. Okay, so we're going to do some competition brisket preparation. We have a brisket cooked by the team q and by the fire, who I'm sort of helping out here a little bit. And here's our brisket. It's done with my recipe, and uh, it looks pretty darn good. And uh, sure, why not put some of that up on top of there? Why not? Okay, and what we're going to do is these guys are going to assist me, and we're going to make a box. We're going to do a competition box. Now, if you look here in the brisket, I don't know if you can see it, but there's two slices here, which I put in there on the front end to demarcate where the slice is in the direction of the grain. So that's opposite the grain. Now why am I putting this up here? Well, we didn't have real crusty anyway, so why not make it juicy? So the first thing we're gonna do, if you'll bring that gravy separator over here, John, kinda get it in here so it's in the field. And what we're gonna wanna do is, does this have a hole in it? I'm gonna pull this brisket out. Does it have far end right there? And there's one over here too. Get another piece over here. Let's get a piece over here and put this brisket on. really should be keeping this warmer. Get rid of this piece. Just so I have a piece there that I can plop this on. I'm gonna pull this brisket out of here and we're gonna pour off this uh, juice, the au jus. Yeah, there you go. Okay, now, hold that thing. Hold this, just let it sit there. It's only gonna be a minute. Bring it into the center. And this you gotta be careful with. And that is a good separator. It has that thing on the top that catches the big bits. Okay, good. Now we're done with this. Okay, good. Just put that aside. And now we're going to uh, bring the main attraction over here, our brisket. How's that? Does that camera look like it's recording? Can you see? Now it's not real hot, but I have liner gloves underneath. You always want to have liner gloves underneath. Again, here are our marks. This was the whole brisket. We didn't do any big pre-trim to this thing. We left all the fat on. So there is going to be a lot of fat on the bottom here. And uh, that's going to be okay. This is our point. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to want to take the point off. You guys are watching, right? Yes. So I might even use this thing. The power rig. Watch it, Lily. Kind of separate the point from the flat. I don't, I, what I want to, don't want to do is I don't want to cut off flat muscle. If I don't get the point real clean, that don't matter. This is good right here. Make a bowl out of this. Oh, make it peanut. <laughs> like, just like that. That's good. Just so it stays sort of in the center. So I can put stuff in the center. Okay, now, this is some of the point here, too. Now, normally I would probably just cut this, you know, the whole point. But basically, we're trimming it down so we have a flat. As you can see, one of these cutting boards doesn't help you much as far as mess. You want all this stuff off for sure. Would one of you guys mind coming around here pushing that stop button? Oh, okay, never mind. I gotta do something here anyway. How early before turn in can you separate this point from the line? Well, you're gonna have to decide that. Uh, We're just doing a quick break here. This is gonna be brisket flavored pizza dough. That can't be that bad, right? 
Okay, five minutes. Is that thing running? No. Okay, uh, you can do it. You can try doing it real ahead of time if you want. I did it, you know, real time. In other words, pork went, and then I start doing this. You know? Mm -hmm. You're going to be short of time in the beginning, so you get good at it, and then you're going to have extra time. Take one of those pans out from under here and just put it right here. Get rid of some of this glob. Now, get another pan. How's that doing separating wise? Separating wise. We're going to get another pan and we're going to put our au jus in here. Is it separated? Yep. It is? Looks like it. Well, let me see. Lift it, it up like once. I can't see more. Wow. So take your spout out and give me give me just juice there. So what we're doing is we're separating the fat from the juice of the bread. Just nasty fat off here. You want this off, but I think you want it more level than anything else. So let's see what we got again. That looks pretty good. So here's our cuts. Here's my two cuts that I made. And we're going to be cutting our slices in here. And we got a really good thing here, except up here I got a lot. This is all pointy fat here, so this probably ain't going to work. This part. I'm eating that. Okay. So I've got like my garbage over here and my good stuff over here. This piece is falling apart here, but that's going to be okay. Not a bad idea to taste it. It tastes excellent. So. It tastes good and smoky. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut our slices right in here. Here's the line. This is where our slices are going to be. we got to pay attention that we make clean slices. As you can see, it's kind of thin. This is the test. So this is at the end where it's a little over, might be a little overcooked, but even that thick slice is folding pretty good. Okay? Eat. Taste. <laughs> a little dry. Now, if you need to practice, you can practice on this end. You want to do some, some warm up shots. Now, yeah, it's dry. This end is dry. Mm -hmm. Now, the thickness of the slice, they say the thickness of a pencil? No, thinner. A little thinner. And this is how I do it. And now I drag the tip of the knife. And you don't want them hooked together if you get, you know, no matter what. Maybe a little, maybe thicker. In there somewhere. A little thinner than that would probably be my favorite. Now you're not gonna use this. Might as well cut that off. But in here somewhere is the thickness of the slice. I'm looking right here is where I'm looking. See that? Yeah. Because the thickness only really matters on the top. Because that's what they're going to see in the box. You know what I mean? So you really got to have the top look like it's consistent. And if they're all weird underneath that, well, it ain't gonna matter. The appearance score's already done. Although they'll... Who knows? Now, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do here. I'm lining these up as they're coming off the brisket. Okay, so... This is going this way. See an ornery on the bottom there. It usually not that ornery, just for the record. I have a little bit of fat on the bottom there, which is kind of perfect. 
The female judges will see that fat in the but I think it's supposed to have a little on there. You know, real brisket. You notice no holes. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. If you can come back. Oh, you know what? I can do that. I can put those done. Hang on. Two minute break. I'll, I'll do it. Two minute break. I like this one, the third one in as far as thickness goes. Mm -hmm. Now if I had two briskets and I tasted this one it was dry, I would push it aside immediately and go to the next one. Okay? If that one was worse, then I'd go back. And I, I did start cooking two and it helped me. But in the beginning, when you're just doing this the first couple times, Probably one. You're better off with less stuff to have to deal with. That's too thick, but it'll be okay. The problem is that was about perfect. If you, it's not the, the way it's going to taste. Although thinner is ten more tender. And if they see. What, yeah, you want to be separating these and getting that in between. Just like that, just like I just did. If the judge sees a really thin slices, they're going to think that it was dry or tough and you sliced it like that on purpose. If they eat thick slices, they're going to think you overcooked, overcooked it. it. Which is just totally meaningless. But that's the way they're thinking. slices here just for the record even that thick slice folds over real good and there's the pull test so I'm not gonna reckon <sighs> this is a this is a good brisket as far as what we're getting out of it my hand slipped on the knife that one I might not even this one. Yeah, but just line it up in there So we're doing this about half hour before turning? Well, it depends. you got to figure it out. We'll talk about that. I mean, turn it, brisket turn is what, 130? Yep. It would be like 120 right now. I'd be okay. doing this. But that's after I've, I've got my acne out. Look at this. It's getting good down here, huh? See here, we got we're into the fat now, but that's okay. Now, if you've got a lot of slices, you use a lot of slices. If you don't have a lot of slices, you don't use a lot of slices. So we're into the point here, you see that? No. Oh. oh yeah. Got our work surface just a little tidied up. I'm a little over the top with this clip my hands bit. Now, as I cut those, we put them into this pan with the juice that had the fat separated. We got a lot of juice and we got a lot of slices here. I mean, we are in really good shape. Now, if you'll make this disappear, please, we're gonna make the drip, the cuttings disappear. Just put it over there and then wipe this table off and put a paper towel down. And you guys didn't put the moist paper towels around that box, did you? Around not, the edges. No, not yet. No, we just you have should, the That should have been all towel. done. You do that ahead of time. So, we're going to just leave this here. I'm going to, of course, eat a piece. So, you want this wiped up. You want a couple clean. Actually, you want a tray. 
on a foil tray there. You guys got to do like one guy clean, one guy dirty. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Get that turning box and let's get those moist paper towels around the edges. That should have been done before turn-in started, okay? Before turn-in started, you do all those and you hang the four cloths around the edges, then yep. you just fold them in and shut it. Okay. So then when, when pork goes, I get my box out, clean surface, on here, on one of these. I put the box on, I lay those four pieces of paper towels, maybe the wet one on top, and I close it, and I got all four of them stacked. And some of them, if it has a bad spot in the center, you're gonna cover it with brisket, so I might even put that on the bottom and do them in order. Okay. Based on what's gonna go in them, okay? Because ribs and brisket are gonna cover the center real good. Anyway, but here we have our trimmed meat. I'm gonna take a piece out right here in the center, and we're gonna see, look at that, perfect. And we've got beautiful slices. This is a beautiful brisket. Tasted a skosh dry, but hey, that's brisket for you. Okay, so let's bring that box over here and show it to the fans. One here. Well, that should be done one here. Okay, so here's what they've done, and I'm gonna touch it up for you. Where's my tweezers? So I wouldn't be doing this with dirty hands. I would be doing this before turning started. You want this just on the end, just covering the plastic. I mean, it can cover the garnish a little bit, but not much, especially here, because we're going to... Oh, no. Oh, that was a disaster. Okay. Okay, so let's not, let's forget that I did that. Get me another pan off the bottom there. Put it over there where it's clean. Hang on, hang on. Move this aside. No, no, I was gonna pour that back Just in. Dude. Dump it. Okay. Are you kidding me? I'm Italian. <laughs> I don't let that go to waste. Okay. Now, while we're at it, let's just keep this here. Put that back down. Let's work on this box a little. That's where I started. It was too high in the center, and I can tell you, you can see way too many stems. Those stems should not be showing. Mine didn't have any stems showing. Okay. You got your clean tweezers. You're doing this before you even get to turn in time. Maybe your guy's cooking the chicken, or maybe it's 7 o'clock in the morning. I use the straight side. Tear it and then put the straight side here. And just like this. Then when, it, when it's time, when it's brisket time, I'm getting this out and I'm kind of tucking it here a little bit. You see that? Mm -hmm. Tuck it. That was with a T. Tuck. Now, for you viewers out there. Okay, so... It's not the best garnish. You see here, I can see through. You need more. You need to talk them more. Okay, so now we're going to take this. You're going to hold this. Okay, and that, remember, that's nasty underneath, so don't set it down anymore. Okay, now here's our brisket. Right here. Let's start back over. You're just going to hold that. So here's all our brisket slices. Okay? What we're going to do is, watch me now. Carefully, I'm digging them out and lining them up here. Now, I might be tempted with these since they're no nice. Let's just try and stick them in the box just the way they are. But they're going to be too long. They're never going to fit. Smell good. Right? They're never going to fit. You know Thank it, you. pal. Okay? Now, that one's a little unruly. Oh, man, they're nice. Okay, this got pretty darn good. Okay? So, what we're going to do. We need to straighten these out. Obviously, we're not going to use these. They feel a little hard anyway. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. You guys got to decide. Somewhere along the line, somebody has to decide what he's going to hand in. This has got a little weird up here. They're a little thicker, but it might be okay. Anyway, we can take them and put them in. Bring that box and hold it above here. With these long slices like this, just hold it for the camera. We could put six slices like this, maybe, and get them in, or angle them, but what we're going to do, move it back away, we're going to trim them down. This is, my best results came when I did this. Okay, so I missed the first one there, didn't I? Nice.
Nice, huh? Real nice. Real nice. Now, all the time, sitting in juices. That can be moved aside. This should be folded up here a little bit. Now, you can take this and make it disappear. Put it over there somewhere. Now, cleanliness is important at this point, but we, we kind of already blew our cleanliness, so let's put that over here. So here's our turning box, and I'm going to ask you to move the camera. But you know what? Here, let's just do it right here. We know we made a mess. Is it on camera? Yep. Okay, so here's our brisket. Now, we also have our au jus there. Bring that back over. Bring that pan back over with our finished stuff. Okay, I'm being careful not to touch this box. I've got my tweezers handy somewhere. Right here. They're all clean. Okay. Now, our our separator, you got to get a fine screen and run this through a fine screen. Okay? You can't have them little globules of fat in there. Well, they came when we put these pieces back in it. That was clean juice. Okay, so you got to hold some aside. Yeah. As a matter of fact, that's what I would do. Like we should I should be using that probably. That's the fat now. Oh, is that just fat? Well, anyway, you want, yeah, you hold some aside without any of that stuff. A quarter cup, you know? And here's our slices. Now, how many are we going to put in there? I don't know, man. If I had this many, I'd be really tempted. But let's make sure these are good ones. They are. And we start like this. One at a time. Always one at a time so that there's no way you get stuck together slices and get somebody mad at you. Or get DQ'd or something. Now, do it nicer than I'm doing it. Do as I say, not as I do. Theoretically, these little globular things wouldn't be on here. Notice I'm laying each one down in this juice as I put it over here. You see that? That juice is the most important part. And you see, my things are really doing a good job yes, protecting. They are. As a matter of fact, they, I might still be going too. I might still have a mess. Am I on camera? Yes. The camera's getting this. Okay, each slice is getting laid in the juice. If I run out of juice, I'll scoop more juice in there. We are going to eat this. They thought they were coming in to learn how to do a box. They didn't realize they were making lunch. Okay, now. That probably isn't enough extra garnish, but I realized we had a garnish shortage. I like that full box. So you're only required six slices, but how many do we six have? Six slices. There? All you need is six. So if you're scrounging, you only put in six. If you got plenty, you put in plenty. Why? Under the compressor? We have like 13 slices. Now, the next thing to do is clean clean up a little bit. I hate these towels. Okay. Hang on. Pizza dough break. How many times have I done this? Back to our brisket. Clean yourself. Now, I would not have this mess here. This would be completely clean and my tray would have been on here. It would have been kept clean by my clean team member. Okay? But for the sake of keeping it on camera, we did it right here. Okay? Now, before I do anything else, it looks like it's starting to dry out a little bit. Get some more juice on there, dude. Okay, now I wouldn't have all these globules on here. Okay? 
But as you can see, that's already. Am I on camera? Yep. That's already looking pretty tasty. Now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna pull these things away. My hands are clean. And we're gonna look at a box and determine if we gotta do anything. There's some areas I could use, like here, you see these stems that's out? Cannot have these stems showing. Yeah, I would probably tuck some in around here. We don't have too much to pick from, but you know, maybe fill in the sides here a little bit just to even it out. If you don't have time, put some sauce on it, pick things off like this maybe. You know, the front slice has to be the nicest one. You know, get this stuff off of here. The most important thing is that you put juice on here and send it off. Now, I would never have this stuff in here. This would be in a separate little pan somewhere, like a cup or something, okay? The final thing, I'm trying to get some here without any goop in it, it's impossible. I mean, right before the box walks, saturate that bugger. I wouldn't be carrying it over this either, that'd be to the side, I'm just doing it. I'm doing it sideways for the sake of the camera. And there's your turn-in box. Is it on camera good? Yep. Okay, this would be fixed. These goops would be gone. This would be fixed. Some of these globules would be picked off. But you can see that the meat looks shiny, tender, and juicy, which is the most important part. Now, I got it dirty. I would never do this. I would re up 10 times maybe while I was doing this if I had to. Depends if you're helpers. If you have helpers on your team and they learn what to do, I have a dirty guy and a clean guy maybe, or maybe they know how to do it, but they know when to, I say box, and this pan comes with the box open ready for me, you know? So anyway, the judge, head judge is going to go like this. This shit wouldn't be here, of course. He's going to show it to the judges, and he's going to say, for appearance of the meat. Now, that meat looks pretty damn good, okay? That box, man, it's got too many globules, it's got too much junk on it. But as far as the meat itself, look here, dry. See that? Yep. Now there are tricks, like you can put some, spray some olive oil on some pan before it goes. I wouldn't mess with that for now. I would just make sure you hit that with the stuff. Now, each judge is gonna take a slice. So, do we have some french fry trays with it? Not salty. Oh, well, we didn't pour our tree hugger topping on top. Put a little tree hugger. Right. That's a secret. It's behind you. A little bit on top, and then sauce. Go ahead. Get, get the front one. Remember, the front ones are the ones that are breaking. Not too much, not too much, too much, too much. Too much. Okay, now if that happens, rinse it off with this. Hey. Okay. That's my Okay, judges, you take your slice. Since you took the dad, you're taking the first slice. You put it in your french fry tray. John? That's gonna be a good one, I can tell. Look at that, see how the sauce is in between there? Look, this is what the judge is gonna do. And then the judge is gonna do this. Now this is thick, one. a thick slice, that's perfect. Then he's gonna take a piece like this, and he's gonna take 